planned. Hey, where is, uh, oh, what was your name again? Ariane? What is it? Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann? Carrie Ann, we got your prize. Come on up. We got you a crown, a crown of broccoli to take home. All right, congratulations. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off with a few songs. So Brother Aaron's going to come, and then uh, he's got to do the morning devotion after that. So Brother Aaron, come on down. All right, let's all stand. Stand, you can grab a hymn book, turn to hymn 297. Are you washed in the blood? Hymn 297. Are you washed in the blood? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as blood of the Lamb. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bride and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? Spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Remain standing. If you got a hymn book, turn right to the next page over. 298, there is power in the blood. Hymn 298, there's power in the blood. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving glow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power. 
precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we have a trio to come up and sing. I don't know who's in the sound room, Brother Zach, if you're up there, if you could turn up the mic, then my guitar will be going through. I don't know where my pick is, <laughs> so it might not be as loud, but I'll do the best that I can. While walking down a memory lane not so long ago, Satan came right by my side. Making me feel low He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain When I had gone astray He wanted to discourage me As I walked along my way He said you're undeserving Cause I know where you've been I have a record of your life When you were bound by sin I know your darkest secrets that you would never tell. What makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all the things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags, and my goodness is unclean. There's only one thing I can say to what you've said to me. It's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be, my life's been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Many times I stumbled along this earthly way. I failed a thousand times before, for that I am ashamed. I'm sorry for the things I've done. The Lord could hear my cry, but I rejoice to hear his voice. This was his reply. Victory was given when I was born again. He washed your stained and sinful past and put new life within. No longer do you bear the mark of sin that brought your way. With happiness and peace of mind, you now can say, It's under the blood, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be, my life's been changed. Not shackled by sin and shame, it's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but 
but the blood of Jesus reached under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life has been changed. I'm not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Amen. Thank you for that special. Uh, this morning, uh, we got uh, Brother Aaron's going to come in a moment and uh, do our morning devotions. And uh, Brother Aaron, he uh, works a full-time job, but he, uh, he uh, works with the youth here. And man, he's got a heart and a burden and a love for our young people. And I know that uh, most of the probably churches in the state of New York are similar to that. They uh, they don't have a full time youth leader. Uh, they have a you know uh, someone who works a full time job and just helps out. And uh, man, they can be such such a blessing. I mean, we need people uh, who who love our young people. We need people who have a heart uh, f- for people and for others. And uh, God is God has blessed that. You know, as I was. Uh, uh, deciding, I, I was the youth pastor for many years. I was full time, but we moved on and just uh, kind of through some different circumstances. You know, we had a uh, uh, look for someone else to hire and and uh, looking for who it would be. And I figured it was going to be a youth leader, but then um, Brother Aaron stepped in and really stepped it up. And uh, man, he had a heart, and, I, and uh, there was no longer a need for that uh, because uh, he was able to fill that. Him and his his wife have been a blessing, and. Uh, uh, they got a, a new little baby boy that uh, uh, they have. It's just a joy to them, and uh, they've just grown, and they have a heart for them. And I really appreciate uh, him working with young people and looking forward uh, to being able to work off of this conference and build from it. And so I know maybe there's some uh, maybe youth leaders here uh, who, who are in that same situation. Uh, many of you here are, here are are the pastors who brought your, your young people. And, uh, man, praise the Lord for that. You know, my dad always had a had a love and a heart for the young people of our church. I know that made a big difference. And if the pastor uh, has a heart for them and, and cares for them and spends some time for, for some young people, and you young people should uh, appreciate that, should be thankful that you have a pastor who cares enough to, to bring you to something like this. And so at this time, Brother Aaron's going to come and, uh, and uh, give us a devotion and what Lord has laid upon his heart. All righty, thank you very much, Pastor. Thanks for asking me to uh, be up here and preach. Uh, who is tired from last night? Anybody still tired? I was very tired this morning. Usually I'm uh, Mr. Energy, can run around, kind of a morning person, but I really wanted to just sleep in today. But that's okay. I'm glad to be here. That singing got me really excited. My heart was literally pumping singing. I've, uh, I like all the exciting uh, music we've had, uh, had this week, the great piano playing last night. We had some good specials. Thank you so much for Leah uh, for singing with us today. I've been trying to sing with Leah for like as long as I've known she can sing, as long as I've been singing. So that was a pleasure. You know, it's good to see uh, teens singing. I love leading the hymns and you guys are singing as loud as you can. You guys do an awesome job. And uh, like Pastor, I believe Pastor Gray was talking about, just to see young people serving God, being excited about God, what a testimony uh, that is for people. You know, I was, uh, a few years ago, I went to a, a Christian concert. It was the Booth Brothers. They were out in Utica. So I went and seen them, and, and they're really good. They're exciting. And they had a time where they just sang hymns, and they invited everybody else uh, to go and sing along with them. And so I know the hymns. I like singing. I love music. So I was singing all the hymns, whatever, just enjoying it, having a good time. And after the show, a lady comes up to me, had no idea who she was, never talked to her before in my life. Like I said, I was in Utica. I'm not from around there. And she comes up to me and goes, it was just so good to see a young person who knew all these hymns singing these songs, was just excited to be here. And I was like, this lady paid. Some of these Christian concerts are free, but these guys... I don't know, you, you got to pay to see them. So she paid tickets to go see these professionals sing, and she was looking at me singing hymns. 
and what a blessing it was to her. And so that just that encouraged me. I'm glad it, it helped her, encouraged her. But you teens, what just know what an encouragement you can be to you know, o- older people, adults, if you guys are serving God, being excited about God. And that's not what this lesson is particularly about, but just something I wanted to share because it, it's exciting this week to see you guys be be so excited. So uh, let's get right into it. And uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 12. You got your Bibles? Brought your Bibles today? Turn to Romans chapter 12. And this is a, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys have all heard this, this verse before, but, uh, you know, we're talking about this week, the theme of this week is putting Christ first, putting him in first place. And in order for something to be in first place, there's got to be things that are, that are behind it, right? You can't have anything above that. It's not in first place, right? You're going to have to sacrifice some things for Christ to be in first place. So let's just start out by reading uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Uh, let's, open up, uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, just thank you for today and the time that we get to be here, Lord, and be in your house and just hear your word. And thank you, Lord, for the preaching that we heard last night, Lord, and all the singing. And it's just exciting to, to see us be on fire for you. And I pray that, that would continue today. And I ask, Lord, that you just give me the words to speak, Lord. Empty me and myself and just fill me with your spirit. And that uh, the lesson that you laid on my heart would, uh, would just uh, touch these kids' hearts and they would surrender their lives to you, whatever you have for them to do, God. I just pray to be with all of us now throughout the rest of today, and we ask all this uh, in Jesus' name, amen. So we're just going to go through this, this first verse here, kind of pick it apart a little bit. I'm not going not gonna to be super long, but just a couple things I wanted to share for you. So the first thing is, is we're just going to look at the word therefore. It says, I beseech ye, therefore. So pay attention to that word there. You know, I don't have time to go through the whole book of Romans and talk to you guys about uh, what happens, but... You know, he's saying because of the things that happened in the, in the first few chapters of Romans, th- you got to do these things he's going to talk about. And when you read Romans, it's kind of like going through the Romans road when you're leading somebody to Christ. You're talking to, telling them about how we're all sinners, how we're born a sinner. There's none righteous, no, not one. Right? We're all born sinners. And uh, because of that, we need a Savior. And you go to Romans uh, 5.8. But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins because he loves us that much. And if thou shalt believe on the Lord Jesus and that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right? So you're going, it's talking about on the previous chapters of Romans how you can get saved, how we're sinners, and how, and how you can know Christ and what he did for us. And because of those things, therefore, because of those things that he did for you, you need to sacrifice your life to him. So let's take a look at the first one. It says, by the mercies of God. So living, this, uh, living our lives, living just in general here on earth is not a, an easy life. We're going to go through uh, certain trials. We're going to have things happen to us. It, it's, life is not going to be easy for us here. You know, we can't serve God on our own strength. We can't do it. You're gonna, the, and there's an enemy out there, the devil. He wants to stop you guys from serving him. He's a roaring, a roaring lion. Um, seeking whom he may devour. He wants you guys not to serve God. He wants to get a hold of your life with the lies that the world is telling. He wants, he does not want you to serve him. And we can't, and if we try and serve him on our own strength, we're not going to be able to do it. We're going to go through hard times. You know, just recently our family uh, went through some really, really hard times. And uh, it was only by God that we, that we were able to continue uh, serving him. You know, I had to take over the music. It was right before missions conference. And I'll be honest, me, I didn't really want to do, I wasn't feeling like I wanted to do any of it. I had to get up there and sing and lead all the songs. And we just had this tragedy happen. And if it was on my own drink, that I wouldn't have done it. But by the mercies of God, I did it. So let's turn over uh, to Lamentations. Book of Lamentations, chapter number three. And then we're going to be looking at verse um, 22. In verse number 22, it says, 
It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We do serve a merciful and uh, faithful God. Every morning, his mercies are new. Man, when we were going through that time with our family, I can tell you there was some new mercy uh, every day that God gave us. It could have been, you know, after the missions conference, somebody coming up to me and just saying, Aaron, what a blessing that song was. How good to see, uh, how good to see you guys still serving God. You know, they know what we were going through. Just, just encouraging words. Um, you know, pastor was talking about our, our uh, little boy, Luke. His name's Luke. He's a little redhead. I don't know where I got the redhead son from. But uh, we love him so much, and he's awesome. And right in the middle of, all, of going through all of that, man, he just started to grow, and he started hitting a whole bunch of milestones, kind of talking and crawling and, and doing all these cool, exciting things. And uh, it was kind of just what we needed. It kind of helped us uh, get through. We were going through some tough stuff, and man, he, what, a, what an awesome little boy he was. And I just thank God for giving us him. I, you know, I believe he... We had been praying for a kid for a long time, and we had him just at the right time. God knew it was coming, and what an encouragement uh, he was. And then people would come and uh, giving our families meals and uh, just being there for us, taking kids out to go and to hang out and just give them a fun time, get them away from what was happening. And it was just such an encouragement. Just thankful so much for our church friends and family, and thankful to God to God for being faithful. You know, when you're serving God, when you're living for Him, when you're doing right and you're giving your all for him, he will be faithful to you. He will take care of you. It says it right here. It says there are, uh, they are new every morning. God's mercies, great is thy faithfulness. He is faithful. And if you serve him and you love him and you give your all for him and you know that it's not on, on your own strength, but it is, um, it's through God's strength, and that's the only way you can serve him, he will be faithful to you and take care of you as you, as you serve him. And then... If you look at the next uh, little phrase, it says that you present your bodies um, a living sacrifice. Uh, you know, like I said, the theme of this uh, teen convention, it is first place. Putting Christ first in our lives, right? And in order to put something first, you've got to sacrifice some things. It's kind of like uh, when you get married, right? I've been married for five years. We just passed our five-year uh, anniversary. And when I got married... Well, before I got married, you no, know, I was a young single guy, living at home, didn't really have any bills. I had a cool car, 2011 Charger, RT, Hemi, it's fast. I loved it. And uh, living at home, going golfing every week, or do, do whatever I want. You're a young single guy, right? You can do whatever, it doesn't matter. And I love my wife. I'm not complaining that she doesn't let me do anything. That is not where I'm going. She's not here, I promise. Uh, I'm not saying that. But I got married, and you got to sacrifice a little bit of those things. You know, when the weekend comes, you're like, yeah, Christine, I'm going golfing. You are? What am I going to do? What, what, what's the plan? You didn't want to hang out with me? And you're like, oh, okay. So uh, you got to sacrifice some things. That's not a huge sacrifice. I can, I can give up golf every now and then to hang out with my wife or something. And, but here, God's... Uh, <laughs> Listen, I was a spoiled uh, young man living at home, okay? I had it good, all right? I had to get married, and I got married, and it was uh, 180 in my life, okay? But um, you do have to sacrifice, right? Right? And uh, so same thing with God. You, he gave his life for you. You surrendered your life to him. You asked him to be your savior. You have given him your all, your, your whole life. You need to sacrifice. You know, um, some of you kids... Like Pastor Gray was talking about, you're seniors, you're graduating, you got a choice to make soon. Are you going to say, I love my master, or are you going to choose this freedom? Are you going to choose to just go out and do uh, whatever you want? Maybe you have some big plans to go and, and be a doctor, or be a lawyer, or maybe you're going to go play a sport or something at college, whatever it is, that's all, that's all good at all good and all, but have you thought about what you're going to do for God with your life? You know, maybe God's called you to be in the ministry. Maybe you're fighting that. As are any of you here um, called, to, called to go be a preacher, called to be a missionary, or called to just serve in your church uh, faithfully? Um, I don't know what that is, but you need to surrender your will 
to God. So, you know, those things being, being all, having that you need to have a job, you need to be able to provide for your family, but is it what God wants for your life? Have you surrendered your life to him? Have you given him all? Or are you trying to please yourself? Are you trying to put your own life ahead of what God has in his plans for you? So we need to be a living sacrifice. We need to give our lives to God. We need to do what he wants for us uh, with our lives. And look at the next uh, little phrase there. It says, uh, holy uh, holy and acceptable unto God. You know, holy, we need to live set apart from the world. Uh, we need to live holy lives. You know, the world tells us, uh, the world wants to tell you, they lie to you. They say it's fun to, to, to do drugs, to drink, to party, to live immoral lives. They, it's fun to just do uh, whatever you want, whenever you want. But you know what? That's a lie. It, it's, it might be fun for a very, very short time, but in the end, it's just going to destroy your lives. I have seen drugs, I've seen drinking, I've seen people who live those sort of lifestyles ruin their families, ruin uh, their lives. You know, God gave his life for us, that's why we sacrifice to him. Well, he is also holy, so we need to be holy. Turn over to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1. And in verse 15, it says, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right here in the Word of God, God is telling us he's holy. We're, we're of course, not going to live up to God's uh, standard of holiness, okay? He's far above us, anything we can reach. But we need to be holy. We need to live right. There is a right way to live, and we need to do that. How can you be surrendered to God? How can you sacrifice to God, but then you don't, you don't live uh, a holy life? That doesn't, it doesn't work, right? If you're, if you're saying here, you're sitting here going, man, I want to serve God. I want to give my all to God, but you're going and doing things you know is wrong, that none of that matters. You need to be living a holy lifestyle and doing what God would have you to do, living right. Don't get caught up in the world trying to tell you that it's fun to, uh, to just do what you want, to uh, live immoral lives, to go and uh, drink and party and do all this crazy wild stuff. None of that means anything. What's really fun is serving God, letting God work in your life, and uh, leading people to Him. Man, that's awesome when, uh, when you're able to lead somebody to the Lord, isn't it? I did that. One of the teens here, I don't think he's here today, but uh, last year, maybe it was two years ago, I led him to the Lord at VBS, and I actually forgot about it. And then one year he comes up to me and goes, out of nowhere, just walks up and says, Aaron, I remember you led me to the Lord. Thank you so much. And man, what a blessing that was. I totally forgot. And I don't know if I was feeling down at the time, but I just know it was a, an encouragement to me. And that was better than any fun I've ever had outside a church or anything. It's just knowing this kid remembered that I was one to led him to the Lord. That was awesome. What a good time. So live holy, live holy lives, surrender your lives to God. And lastly, let me turn back to Romans. <clears throat> we see... It says, which is your reasonable service? Look at that word, uh, reasonable. You know, whatever God calls you to do, it's reasonable. You know, I've been at work, or maybe you guys have been at school, and you talk about church, and uh, maybe you said, oh, I'm going to the teen convention. I'll be there all day, all night, this, this whole week, mon uh, Monday through Wednesday. And possibly your friends are like, man, that's a long time. Don't you want to have fun in the summertime and go uh, camping or do whatever it is that you do? At work, I've, they all know by now that uh, I'm here in church and this is what I do. And, um, but when I first started there, you know, I'd tell people, oh, I'm, i got to take this week off. I'm taking the kids up to Albany for uh, a boot camp. Or I'm, uh, every Saturday we go out on visitation. Every Sunday I'm there all day. i got to be there early uh, before church to uh, practice for choir and practice for the specials and do all, the, and do all these things. And they would sit there and go, doesn't that seem a little crazy? You're, uh, you never get any time for yourself. What are you doing? One lady said, you know, it's okay to have a life outside of church. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, this is it. That is my life. Jesus gave, Jesus gave his life for me. I got to give my life to him. This work and this job, this is a great job. I, I, I'm very glad he provided it for me. And I think it's the one he gave for me just so I could even be here. You know, I got to... I'm just going to pick on myself a little bit. I got a government job. I got a, I got a pretty easy job, not going to lie. And I get to, uh, I'm a, I got a union job, so if I need the day off, 
I, I don't have to give much notice. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a good job. I'm able to be here for a lot of these events and stuff. So praise God for that. I think that's why I work there and, I, and also to be a witness there. But uh, that's not my life. I'm not a town of clay water department. That's not what I identify as. I'm a Christian first and foremost. I love God and this is my life. It's reasonable. It says right there, it's reasonable. And I you ever feel like I don't even think I'm sacrificing as much as I could. I mean, there's a missionary we had come here. He was a young guy, I don't know, maybe 30. He had uh, three beautiful uh, little kids. They were some of the cutest little kids I've ever met. And he was, uh, he had a, what was his name? Pastor Matt, uh, his name was Matt, I don't remember his last name. Um, He was going to Serbia is where he was going. And uh, he had a construction job. I believe he said he owned the business. So I imagine he was making good money. He, was, he had it all. He was living the life that anybody, uh, any young guy would have wanted to live. But he said, he's like, man, God was calling me to, to do something. He ended up getting his life right with God, and he was taking his family to Serbia. He didn't know anything about that country. When he showed pictures, he did a slideshow here. It was like, you know when you watch a movie, a, any of the movies about like Eastern Europe, and they're in that setting, Eastern Europe, and it's just gray and dark and rainy and you know, nasty looking. It looks, it just looks awful. That's what all those pictures looked like. He's taking his family, three, three little kids there, and didn't know anything about it. He said there's no Baptist church in the area he's going to, not at all. And he's going there to start. That's a sacrifice. How about these missionaries who are going, martyrs who have given their life? That is a sacrifice. You know what it says right here in Romans 1? It says, which is your reasonable service. You know, whatever God has for you to do, it's reasonable. Maybe you guys are struggling. Maybe God is calling you to be in the ministry, calling you to be a pastor, calling you to be a missionary. Uh, and you say, no, that's crazy. I can't do that. <laughs> Look at me. A few years ago, I was, uh, I was a teen. I wasn't involved in church. I didn't want anything, didn't really care anything to do with it, but I got my life right with God. I started I never thought I'd sing, and now I'm playing guitar up in front of people. I never thought I'd be preaching, and here I am. It's reasonable. You can do it. Whatever God has for you to do, you are going to be able to do it. There's nothing, God is not going to call you to do something that, he, that you won't be able to do through him, by his mercy. And so that's what I have for you guys today. You know, you, you got to surrender your lives to him. you got to be a living sacrifice. Holy. Live right. You can't, you can't sacrifice, you can't be a good witness to people if you aren't living a holy life. And um, it, whatever it is God has for you, it's reasonable. There's nothing too crazy that God has for you to do. You can do whatever, whatever it is that God wants you to do as long as you put your faith and trust in Him. Let's all bow our heads for a moment, close our eyes. And teens, you know, if you're... Uh, Maybe some of you here feel like you're being called to preach. Maybe some of you feel like you're, you're called to just serve God with your life, surrender your life to him. You now here the Bible tells us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. He paid the price for, for your sins so that you don't have to. It is only reasonable that you give your life to him. You know, he wants you to surrender your life and serve him. Or maybe, teen, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. Get that right today. He died on the cross for your sins, so you didn't have to pay that price.